You know, as we are entering this new season, uh, we're going to be focusing on, and that song was so appropriate because it says, uh, you are a good, good father. Yes, he yes. is. It, it is who you are. And it says, this is who you are. It's who you are. And then it says, I am loved by you. Yes. That's who I am. That's who I am. And then it says, because you are perfect. God is good. Amen. All the time. How often do we say God is good? All the time. All the time. And then we say in all the time. God is good. Yeah. Living in God's goodness, we're going to be talking about folks. Is God really good all the time? Yeah. yeah. Psalm 23, 6, verse 6, verse 8, uh, 6a says, Surely your goodness and your love will follow me all the days of my life. Think about that. His goodness and love will follow us all the days of our lives. And then verse, in, in the next part of that verse, it says, And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Right. But the question is, is God really always good? All the time. Oh. And we really have to understand this because it's, it's so powerful that we can say it. And we're going to learn today that there are several things that God does in our lives when we, we are focused on His goodness. And we're going to need to learn today how good He really is. What about when you're going through pain? Conflict. Suffering. Loss. God still good? Yes. Yeah. It says that God's goodness is present whether he, we feel good or not. And it is not based on our goodness. It's not based on how we feel in the moment. Focusing on God's goodness is important because His goodness is what sustains our relationship with Him. Turn to someone and tell them that. I want you to turn to them and say to someone there, He says... God's goodness is good because it sustains our relationship with Him. God is awesome, folks. Psalm 105 says, The Lord is always good. He is always loving, kind, and His faithfulness goes on and on to each succeeding generation. That means it's passed on. Amen. How God, how good is it really? How God really is he? I mean, in your eyes, is he? Is he is what he says he is in his word? Does, does it make sense to us today? Today, I'm going to focus on a powerful uh, testimony that God has given me, based on His goodness. So often we, we, we can be distracted of that goodness because we are looking at all the circumstances that we go through in life. Often we lose hope about our situations because we forget about that God is always there. That He is always there. We often take life for granted and start thinking that we are the best, the best person to control our lives. How many of you ever thought that way? Well, then we think we're the best person to control our lives. But the Word of God reminds us that everything comes from God. Turn to someone and say, everything comes from God. Everything, everything comes from God. from God. But when we try to take matters into our own hands, the Bible says we lean on our own understanding. I'm going to share time. And you probably have testimonies in your life that how so often things will be going on in your life and you sort of don't see this this way. Things are going to happen in your life. Just remind someone next to you that things are going to happen in your life, okay? Let them know it's going to happen. You know, things are going to happen. It doesn't matter. It doesn't change the fact that God is good. Tell them. It doesn't change the fact that God is good. 1 Corinthians 4.7 tells us, What do you have 
that God has in giving you. Now I'm going to say that's not rhetorical, but I'm going to say, what do you have that God has not given you? Think about it. Troubles? Disease? Disease? <coughs> Fear? Fear? When we have to pay the consequences. Consequences? Okay. What did you have? But I want you to think about it this way because I wanted to see that so often in life we go through stuff. We're not prepared for the way things come about in us. There are times when each of us are thrust into situations out of, that are out of control in our lives. How many of you have experienced that? Mm -hmm. yeah. How do we trust God? And, and the truth is, how do we learn to trust God more in a situation like that? How? It's a question. How? Uh, I have a, what you call it, that when um, all the variables that are around us, there's still a constant. So it's like leaning on God despite the chaos. Yes, that's right. Well, I have a practical situation in my job with my the art teacher that came in and we're sharing a room and something happened to the tricycle that we spent so much time building it's broken up in pieces and um, she insists that it just fell. Huh. I built the shelf and uh, we designed the bike. A tricycle does not flip on its own. But that took me to a different place, a place in the flesh that I didn't know that I could go to. Right. Um, but over time, the Lord led me to some songs that I had to, that just ministered to me and ministered to me until I was able to let go of the flesh and realize that I'm here to serve. Amen. So often, yes, brother. Yeah, just when you are in a special situation or you're in trouble, um, it makes you go, Put you closer to God because you have, you have to. And you have no other choice, actually, but that's a good time for you to press in and get closer to God. And I like that because it's a good thing that you don't have a choice because you try to find other ways other than God to find yeah, other ways to go around. There's only one way. God is the only way. How we learn, how we learn to trust God more in situations like that. When do you trust God more when these situations are, whether they're good or bad? Say His plan. He has a ploy in a Christian's life. Several things he wants to do. One, he wants to make you ineffective. He wants to make your walk and your testimony, your witness, ineffective. That's his plan. So when the trials come, he throws that there because he's looking to make sure you fail. See? His plan is to make you fail. And we have stories that go on in, in situations in our life. You see, like First Peter tells us that, you know, uh, uh, and he's telling us specifically, he says, uh, admonish us to, to live such a good life among the, the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God in those days. So even though the enemy intends to tempt you and throw you off, yeah, God has a plan for it. I, I was in a last weekend I was uh, after the it was Easter it was a wonderful service and all of that I go out with my brother and my mom and, and Jay and, and my mom and I tell you she can remember everything yeah. and her mind 89 years old and she's like you know and she was just reminding us as we were sitting at that table of how bad my brother was he had no idea he was let me tell you troubles is nothing I mean even as a kid he, he crashed maybe five or six cars before he even had a license. Wow. And I mean totaled. 13, 14 would take a car and just didn't care. And he would just go and just, you will find it totally demolished. Didn't give a second thought. Then he would take my license every single time and use my name. <laughs> This was his pattern for years. He would take my license, take the cars without permission, whoever it was, and he would total the car. Then he would use my name. 
he, I was always getting him out of trouble. When he was in trouble as a kid, he was always calling me to the bullies, everything. He was always calling me, and I was there for him. I remember that he was even in a... I used to give him money all the time. And despite of the money I would give him and his friends, more than enough, he would still try to take from me. My mother put him in a... Uh, how you call it? Uh, Military school, he got kicked out of that. I mean, he got kicked out of everything. <laughs> so, I had to take him to college with me. I was in college on Rock Hill, South Carolina, so I put him in high school over there, and then he moved with me in my dormitory that kicked my roommate out. And so, in there, one day I get a call from, in the dormitory, we were laughing about this because I get a call in the dormitory, and I can't tell you how many times I had to go to school because of them fighting. So I get a call, and, and one of the guys in the dormitory picks up the phone, and his name was Dave, and, um, and this is my brother telling him, um, Yo, Dave, get my brother Louie. And Dave says, Louie? He said, yeah, get my brother Louie. Louie? Louie's on the phone, and he's asking him to get Louie. So David goes to me, he says, Yo, Ben, your, your brother Louie's on the phone, but he's asking for Louie. I already knew. They was all confused. I already knew he was in trouble. Right? So I get on the phone. He says, he says yeah, Louis? I say, yeah. He says, uh, can you bring your license to this uh, precinct? He was driving me out. We had a Trans Am, so he got in trouble driving the car. And so he had no license. So now he's calling me pretending because back then, License didn't have a picture. Mm -hmm. So he would use my name forever. So I had to go to the precinct. Oh, what, what choice did I have? Right? Give him my license then so he could read me. I get a ticket. We'll have to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> I will loan him a car when we came back years later. He will come back without the door. Oh. Yeah, no door. I said, what happened? Oh, I opened it and somebody came and took it. <laughs> <laughs> I realized you learned it that years down the line, my brother had some serious um, reservations with he then, for some reason, he had some hatred towards me. <clears throat> it was just, you know, I was, maybe I was a bigger brother, maybe he turned his favor, whatever it was. He was, he, and he, he said it. He was, it was always something that he had against me, and I don't know why. All I know is that I did what I had to do. My responsibility to be a good, good brother. So often, you know, it's hard to sort of take something like that and understand that, you know, what the amazing part is that God was always good to me. <coughs> he always made a way for me. It didn't matter what he did, the Lord's favor was still with me. And I wasn't even saved. What does that tell you? See, God has a plan for each and every one of us because He's good all the time. It doesn't matter the circumstance you're in, no matter what mistakes you make, God is always good and watching out for you. Church is one says He's always watching out for you. No matter what the enemy intends for evil, God works it out and turns it for good. That's how I know God is good. That's how I know that God comes through all the time. Hebrews 4.16 says, So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive His mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. He always comes through. Turn to so I want you to make sure the person that you know God is always going to come through for you. I don't care what it looks like, because God is good. We were talking in a class earlier, Jay mentioned, 
because sometimes it's difficult to even pray when things are going like that. But we have hope. Hope is a purpose. It gives purpose. It gives confidence. It gives strength. Faith is secure. It gives security regardless of the circumstance. And God gives us all the gifts because He is good. I learned this and I hold on to this because I, I know for a fact we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God. He works everything for good no matter how bad it looks, feels, seem, He works it out. Now I'm telling you this for one reason only right now. We have to hold on to God's goodness and understand that He has a purpose for your life. For your spouse, for your children, for your uh, siblings, for everyone, He has a plan and a purpose. We have to hold on to who God is. Who He is. The song says, who He is. And then understand who I am. In Him. God allows us to see certain things only when things are difficult. Sometimes we're not, when things are good, we have no need to look for God. Right? Why, what reason would we have to look for God if things are going good? But when things are bad, we can go either way. You can take matters into your own hands, or you can look for God. We need to share these kinds of testimonies that God gives. He gives us an example. Give an example today of an experience that led people to distrust God's goodness. What reason would anyone have to not trust God? Now we're talking. What reasons could anyone have not to trust God? Yes. Some people are too busy looking at the lives of Christians, and when they mess up, they say, oh, there. Okay, good. There's no reasons, yes. They have the wrong understanding. The wrong understanding. What could that be? They don't understand what it is to blame him for everything he's doing, and they don't understand that he's there for everything. We discussed that in class today, because so often when things go bad, so why did God allow that to happen? Tragedies happen and people don't understand why yeah. they happen. Yeah. And then they say, think about it. Yeah, absolutely. Anybody else? Yes. You believe God told you something and it didn't turn out that way. Yeah, that's a big one. I heard God tells me, I heard prophet prophesied over me that this is what I was going to do this. I hear that a lot. But when things don't turn out the way you want it or expect it, you wonder. Anybody else? Before I move on. I want you to stimulate some thinking here. Yeah. Yes. Well, we do it to ourselves and then we blame him for the outcome. But remember, if God's good all the time, what does that say about us? If he's good all the time, God is good all the time. I want to hear your perspective before we move forward. Because that's a good point. If I say to you, God is good all the time, what's going on to your mind? How do you interpret that in your own mind? Yes. Practical. Yes. What I find is that if God is good all the time, so he's going to be good whether I made a mistake or not. Right. That's right. And he has a cover. Okay. Anybody else? Because I, I want you to see that because if God's good all the time, what does that mean that God is good? What does that mean to you? I mean, I'm really forcing you to think. Yes, Steve, I'll be with you in a minute. It's that uh, we have to realize we're not perfect, so we have someone to go to when we're going through our stuff. He's good all the time. He's who we go to. He's who we should seek. Okay. Okay, we're getting to those. They're very good. Yes. <laughs> He's good despite if we don't understand 
Yes, you almost did because that's it. Yes. You won't let you down, and even if you think things are going wrong, you only see the smaller picture and the larger frame of things. He's always looking up. That's right. If he's good all the time, he's watching out for you. Why? All the time. He says, no matter where you go to the valley, he's where. You go to the mountain top, he's there with you in the mountain top. He says he's going to do what he said he's going to do. Stories in the Bible are clear on that. Where have you seen any man and woman in the Bible, in the story, in your favorite story, that the person didn't go through something difficult? Any story. And it puts a lot of our stories to shame. And God used those stories, those testimonies, that witness to show us how powerful and how much God truly loves us. Moving forward, we got to understand that God is truly a good God, despite of the circumstances. He has everything under control. Turn to someone. He said, God has everything under control. I told the story at the uh, uh, class the Friday. He says, your life in Christ resembles a tenant owner relationship. When the house has a problem, you can ask the owner to what? Fix it. In other words, God is the owner of your life and what are some of the benefits of being just a tenant in God's house? Got the story? Got the logist of the story? You, your life is the house. You're a tenant in your house, but God owns it. When there's a problem in your house, what do you do? Oh, yeah. Say, fix my house. <laughs> <laughs> fix my house, that's right. Lord, I got a leak. I'm bleeding here. But so often we have a tendency to take matters what? And how do we do that? Forget that we have a set out here. Let That's right. Think about this. Now we can use any particular stories in the back because they are the stories are, are amazing how it works, but it, it, like, let's you know, so so often tolerating life's trouble provides uh, maturity and patience and becomes an asset to deal with future troubles. So it has a future opportunity. So often, I had someone the other day, and they could only see their current situation. I said, if you can have, God gives us a vision to see beyond. This is why he wants you to know how good he really is. He wants to see, to see beyond. You know, having a vision is not an easy thing. Because only God can give it. So we have to understand that when he puts you in a position like that, he wants you to see the benefits of being able to trust Him with your life. We have to understand that God is good all the time. And when we share these experiences with others, they're going to be able to see, not because you said it, because of what the Spirit is doing in you. It's easy to doubt His goodness when our circumstances are filled with conflict, tragedy, or need. We don't understand everything, but we must choose to trust his goodness. How do we do that? How do we choose to trust Him rather than take matters into our own hands? Can I just give an illustration I remember? Sure, go for it. I felt so depressed and did not understand what God was doing when President Trump was elected. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and I felt like I was with doom. We were on the creek with the avocado. <laughs> we were just going to be destroyed. I couldn't see any good. And I really said, God, why did you allow that to happen? I still don't understand. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. 
I had clients that came into my office that week. I mean, I can't tell you how many with the same, and I tell them all the same thing. They left with peace. And I tell them, God has a plan. God has a plan. Things have to change. And God, the way God works, He turns everything around. But who's in charge? If God has a plan for whoever He puts in place, it's because He has a what? If God didn't want him there, he wouldn't be there. But when people think about the scripture, he's solid. He's solid. <laughs> but when that terrible talking Trump won the presidency, that's right. Before you. One, I was praying, Lord, you are the Lord of the United States. Amen. Amen. So Trump went, the president, yep. and everybody, all of my sons, they were there. We were watching the election outcome. And of course, it looked as if uh, Hillary was going to win. But, well, she won the popular vote. But, who? Well, helped, <laughs> we have a um, Let's get it. helped Trump win the electoral vote. So, so, of course, Drew said, oh, that's awful. And Chris says, gee whiz. And I tell them, hey, doesn't matter. God, he's in control. Amen. No matter Bottom what. Bottom line. Bottom line. And America is great. It doesn't need That's to right. be made great again. That's right. Because he doesn't know what he's talking about. Right. Well, well. Well, let's, let's remember this. It has nothing to do with Trump. It all has to do is that God is good. He's in charge. He's in That's control. Right. End the story. Throughout the history of the Bible, you've seen that when people refuse to turn from their ways, he will do what? Turn them over to their sin. That, oh, God. God will turn them over because they refuse to comply with God. So things have to happen and you turn around as a wake-up call. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean that God's not in charge. Amen. But it was for me. It's been a very good wake-up call. Because whenever Trump makes one of those uh, whatever, um, when he comes against, what was it that he came against? Exactly. All right, well, listen up, yeah. listen up. I'm going to let you finish in a minute, Conchita, please. Give me one minute. Based upon what I'm going to say right now is this, that what happens when we forget God's goodness, we rely on our circumstances and on people. When we start to lose sight that God is really in charge and in control, we tend to start falling into all the stuff around us. When it really... It's irrelevant when you have a relationship with God. Right. Will you agree? Yeah. And so, whatever it is, what happens when we forget God's goodness in everything? This is what happens. We, we, number one, we, take, we claim credit for what God did for us in the first place. Right? right? When we take God out of the picture and we forget His goodness, there's so many things that happen. We stop asking God for help. And this is all scripture, 1 Corinthians 4, 7. What do you have that God has not given you? Right? And then when I say, stop asking, we stop asking God for help. If, if you, Jesus said, if you, as perfect parents, know how to give good gifts, he says to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give you? So why are you worried about what anyone else can give you? Why are we putting our eyes on a man or on anything else? 
else when we should put it on the one that provides and supplies everything. Amen. When we start to lose sight of God's goodness, we stop trusting God in difficult times. That's what happens. So we get bent out of shame because we don't think that God's in charge. The Bible tells you. Psalm 16, 1 and 2. Protect me, God, because I trust you. You, my Lord, and every good thing I have come from, it comes from you. His word tells you. But if we are worried, distracted by the way the enemy throw things at us, and we forget, again, what am I saying? I'm saying that we, uh, whenever we forget God's goodness, we fall into the habitual patterns. Paul tells us we can have joy even in our troubles because we know that these troubles are good for us. Producing patience, character, and hope. Romans 5.3 or Romans also 8.28 and we know that in everything what? God works for good of those who love Him. We don't have to worry about who's up there. Amen. Because God is what? All the time. No, he's good. <laughs> he's got this. You're not passing a test. You're not paying your rent. Some things you don't have enough. Yo. <laughs> There's a little lack here. <laughs> it's just a matter of your attitude. Things are happening. Not feeling good. Whoa. Who do we go to? That's it. But if you try to take, again, the enemy's plan is to distract you, distract us all. He has a plan. The enemy has a strategic plan. It doesn't compare, come close to God's plan, but he still has a plan. So whenever we take our eyes off the Lord, we fall into these areas. We become pessimistic about the future. That's what happens. Because you take your eyes off of God's goodness, we start to look at all our circumstances. But if you understand who you are, who I am, who you are, the song tells you. Understand. It doesn't matter how bad your circumstances look, no matter how grim or quiet, or no matter, it doesn't matter. He is good all the time. And he says that we are called according to his good purpose. But when we become pessimistic about our future, as this Psalm 27, 13 says, I would have despaired, despaired unless I have believed that I have seen goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Instead, I thought, wait for the...